Welcome back candy kids. Today I'm gonna teach you the tape method for being able to iron out your perler beads. The basics of this technique is to use masking tape to tape the beads so you can take it off the pegboard and then iron it. And this way you don't warp your pegboard and you don't have problems with heat and because pegboards are so expensive to replace. So what you're going to need is your pegboard with your perler on it. You're gonna need masking tape. Uh, I am using parchment paper. This is just the Reynolds pop-ups. If you cut these into halves or quarters, they're perfect size for at least one of these squares. An iron, and then something to flatten the tape on top of the beads. I'm using a bone folder because they're made for making creases and paper and stuff. Um, you can use a spoon. You can use like the roll of tape and roll it back and forth. I just like bone folders. So let's get started. Okay, first step is to take a piece of masking tape, like so. You can do it any direction you like, whatever you think is gonna fit best. I am going to actually pull this in half because it's a little long, and I'm gonna start at the bottom here. So you want your tape to overlap your perler, and when you do the next, layer of tape you want them to overlap but just barely you don't want to do a lot of overlapping or else you're gonna have a problem when you go to iron this so we're just gonna lightly press this for right now if one of your beads comes off you can just pop it back in place right now just be very gentle with your beads okay like so it's pretty easy to correct the goal here is to go really slow you don't want to go fast with this just place it. Okay. And we're going to take our bone folder and we're going to push this down pretty good after we get it all taped. Just right now we're, we're placing everything on here. And this method is going to be exactly the same whether you're using one pegboard or multiple pegboards. Okay, so once you have it all taped up, we're going to lightly press, making sure to get in those corners. So it looks like I have one bead that has actually lifted off here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm peeling the tape back slowly and we are gonna put this back in place. So it's right here. And then we just lay that back down. Okay, so that looks good. I'm gonna take my bone folder and we're gonna just go section by section, making sure this is totally pushed down. Okay. And you can start seeing it actually through the masking tape at this point, which is pretty cool. We just need to make sure we get the edges. That's why you want the overhang, is to make sure that all of your edges are completely pushed down. Because if a bead comes out of the middle, it's easier to fix than when it comes out of the edge. Just one last push there. Okay, and now we're gonna be able to actually remove this from the pegboard. So you're gonna do it one side at a time. I'm going to take this side. We're going to pull up all the extra tape first so it all comes off together. And we're going to do this very gently and very slowly. If it gets stuck, you can wiggle it back and forth a little bit. There we go. It should look something like this. If you have a bunch of extra tape like me, uh, this is where we take our scissors and we can clean it up. So you don't want to cut too close, but maybe a smaller shape so there's not so much raggedy edges so they don't get caught on your iron or anything.
And this would be really important if you were doing a really big curler. So, and then there's some debate on whether or not you should poke holes in the tape or not. Some people say that you have a problem with your beads spreading if you don't poke holes in this. So if you wanted to poke holes in your perler creation, you would flip it over. You could either take a thumbtack and put it in individually, each one, or you could take your pegboard. And now we're gonna let our iron heat up. Be very careful if you are a child, please have adult supervision while doing this. So we're gonna put down our parchment paper over our piece. And then when this is ready, we are going to iron it. I like to iron my perler beads on both sides. So I do a nice uh, light coating on the top and on the back. I tend to do a heavier iron. Uh, it's really up to you on whether you want them to be smooth whether you want the holes still on them. I mean, everybody likes them slightly different. I do a light, nice seal on top and then a heavy one on the back. So you're just going to move your iron in a circular pattern. Don't keep it in one spot too long. And you're gonna start to see that your beads stick to the paper and that's what you want. If there's any beads that you see aren't sticking to the paper, now is a good time to kind of maybe focus on those areas. I like to use the tip of the iron to kind of go through those areas. Okay, when you feel like you've got a pretty good coverage, we can peel this off and take a look so we can see what it looks like. All of these have fused together. Now, you don't see any ones that look pretty individual. It looks pretty good together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to very gently, very lightly, peel this tape off. I wanna be very gentle in case there are any loose beads. we put our paper back down and we're going to iron this side. So I hate when perler beads snap in half so I'm very very uh, in the camp of iron both sides really nicely. Um, especially if you're attaching them to like a 3D cuff or something you want a sturdy sturdy or even a necklace you want it sturdy. You don't want it to snap accidentally. That would not be fun. You should also consider um, how you're gonna attach it to the cuff too, because that can have a lot to do with whether the uh, perler is gonna have a long life or a short life. Because I've gotten some on cuffs that have ended up snapping in half because the way that somebody has attached them. So make sure that there's not too much tension and that there is some flexibility with your perlers. That looks and seems good to me. So now we're gonna just peel this off. So what a lot of people will do is to uh, discourage any kind of curling, which happens when this cools, is they will take something heavy and put it on top of it. So you can place a book or something heavy on top of your perler while it cools down. You may also want to flip it halfway between it cooling down just to make sure that it's not bowing one way or the other, or that it's gonna dry and uh, cool down completely flat. All right, you can take a look at our perler. You can see that it has a pretty nice, consistent, even melt to it. Uh, it's not splotchy, there's not some blowout, it's pretty consistent and even, and I like keeping the holes in there. I think that it makes a really nice piece. I hope that this video was helpful for you guys and it helped you figure out how to use the tape method. If you have any questions, you can leave it down below and I will get back and answer your questions as soon as possible. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. I put out new videos every month and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.